right, you guys, welcome back. We made it to Kelowna. The original plan was actually to head to Calgary. I have a few people I wanna go hang out with in Calgary and go shoot and drive with. Uh, Boost Factory, Infamous Arrow, a couple other folks out there. We'll get there, we'll get there. But for now, we got Saul's Evo 4 behind me. Insane color, usually you see these Evo 4s and 5s, a lot of the times in white, uh, imported here into BC. So we'll see if, if it's worth actually what it takes to upkeep an older Evo like this, because these cars are what now, like 25, 30 years old, uh, if not more. So let's go for a drive and see what it's all about. All right, so how do you end up with an Evo 4 as your first car? Oh, well, I kind of figured out that uh, I wanted an Evo after my brother bought a Subaru uh, back in 2019. And so figured, you know, kind of brotherly love, you know, I had to have what's better. So obviously I got this instead. <laughs> it wasn't great. Like the paint work was okay, but um, the front lip here and everything was all mm -hmm. destroyed. Like the bumper paint wasn't perfect. So yeah, the front lip was kind of destroyed. Um, the windshield had a lot of rock chips and stuff and it wasn't perfect, but nothing that paint correction can't fix, right? Do you think the previous owner was rallying it? Honestly, it's hard to say, <laughs> probably. Yeah. As soon as you said rock chipped windshield. Yeah. <laughs> probably, honestly. I think it, it went through a couple of owners in like the first couple of years it was here. They yeah. went through like three other people before me. So it, it, it's been around. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we were just gonna rebuild it stock and then we kind of figured, well, yeah, okay, let's rebuild it stocks. So and then we ordered a bunch of parts and stuff and didn't realize that the motor crank walked. So put a bunch of new parts into it, put a new head on it and everything, drove it for probably 80 kilometers and then engine just locked up. Oh, well, that's weird. So pulled it out and in the garage, I think I was 16 at this time. I like just got my license. Wow. And uh, yeah, we took a crowbar onto the crankshaft and yeah, you could just see the crank was probably moving a good quarter inch out from the blade. <laughs> it was bad. It was really bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then built a new motor in it. It's got, um, yeah, it's got brand new head, manly pistons, eagle rods, manly crankshaft, uh, ACL bearings and such. It's overboard to 85.5, so it's nothing crazy, but it's, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty well good enough. Uh, it's just an Evo 6 RS ECU. It's just, we had, actually this car has been through three ECUs now. So wow. we had the stock ECU in there, pulled it out, put an Evo 5 ECU in it, bricked it put an Evo 6 ECU in it, bricked it with the same tune again. And then we finally got it right on the third one. Um, I think some definition files or something like that, we're screwing it up. So anyways, now it's good, it's good. It has been for like three years, so I'm pretty stoked for that. Yeah, no kidding. So currently for power of the cars, I'd say, I haven't had a, like a virtual dyno done since about 2021. And that was, it was that 256 wheel on a virtual dyno. And that was at 14 pounds of boost. Now the car's at 18 PSI. And yeah, I'd say it's about, 290-ish wheel, maybe mm. 300. Yeah, and then turbo is just stocky before turbo. It's got a uh, three inch downpipe, O2 housing. Um, it's got a tubular manifold on it, which honestly probably does decrease the power a little bit, <laughs> but it actually helps it out in the top end. So it's not bad. It's It still spools pretty good down low and makes power up top pretty nice. And then it's got, um, I believe it's a Cusco intake with a box. I don't know if the box is Cusco, but um, I still have to finish up with that. I would like to put a plate right here. Um, and then yeah, charge pipes, obviously, Gretti Type S block valve, uh, battery relocation kit, and then uh, Blitz Rad, and that's pretty much it. It's honestly just bolt-ons and then Evo 6 injectors as well. Evo 6 RS Brembo's, same as Evo 5 through 9. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, but they are, you know, kind of phony because they have the Project Mew spray paint on them and the decals, but whatever. I, I like them, so I don't really care. <laughs> uh, but it does actually have PMU uh, calipers and rotors, or sorry, pads and rotors. And then for wheels here, we have, uh, I believe they're 17 by 8.5 Advan TC2s. Definitely a lot nicer than the stock wheel in terms of weight. I do have some new bushings for the rear end for the AYC. Oh yeah, they're hard race bushings for the uh, rear AYC diff. And then I still have to, I would like to eventually get some different coilovers. They're currently just old school JDM CT Sport ones. But um, yeah, eventually I'd really like to redo everything suspension. When you're looking for an Evo, specifically 456, so 96 through 2000, if you're including TMEs, um, honestly, your biggest thing you want to look for is mechanically 
And then also body panels. They're getting really scarce to find nowadays and it, they're not cheap. They used to be, but everybody used to buy these things back in the day for pennies on the dollar, right? And just destroy them. So uh, bumpers are actually really hard to come by. Bumpers you want to take care of for pretty much anything body. Yeah. Except for the mirrors. Okay. The mirrors, yeah. everything else you should probably be pretty careful with. Um, there is obviously replacement panels. There is a company out in Alberta. I forget what they're called actually, but they do. They did just start recreating a fiberglass lip for these cars. Oh, cool. That's the one thing that really is actually quite expensive and hard to find, mm -hmm. or it used to be, but nowadays it's quite easy. You can just go to them. Um, is that Infamous Arrow? Yeah, it was Infamous Arrow. Maybe. Yeah, yeah it, well, it was. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you shot a video. On yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was figuring, I'm like, body shop in Alberta who's making aftermarket <laughs> yeah. stuff for Evos. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> one option. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So yeah, Infamous Arrow makes new front lips for these cars, so it's not as big of a deal anymore. Um, but the Pia Fog Lights, the factory original Pia Fog Lights, you want to make sure that you have those because those, when I was looking back in the day, were about $700 a piece to replace. <laughs> if you're looking for the sock replacements. Yeah. But other than that, everything else is pretty easy to come by. Just make sure it has a good interior. Everything else drive drive line is obviously you want to make take a good look over it, but mm -hmm. you know, make you can all replace it with anything pretty much engine wise from Evo four through eight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Uh, all right, should we go drive? Yeah, of course. All right, let's do it. Clutch oh, what clutch yeah, it's an Exetti Stage 3. Oh, cool. All right, right. All right, you guys. So, yeah, if you don't know, this was the first generation Evo to have a true torque vectoring rear differential. I mean, Mitsubishi way ahead of the curve as far as rally homologation goes. That's why I would buy an Evo. Is that like, did you know, of course, about all the homologation stuff before you bought this car? Or honestly, I kind of just bought it, and then like I knew obviously there was some like homologated stuff and such. Yeah. But I learned it definitely a lot after. Learned a lot more about the car and like about its history and stuff. That's kind of cool, actually, though, just to get in this car, experience its capabilities first. Like, cause you don't need to know really the history of. The car. I mean, you can feel what it's doing. Oh yeah. If you drive even this next <laughs> back to back with even an Eclipse GSX at the time. Oh, I mean, it's a completely different experience. It's they're night and day, and there's a reason why these are yeah. what at least double, if not triple, the price of those. Oh yeah, short gears. No kidding. Oh yeah. So stock turbo right now. So getting that sound out of this is basically. Intake. Yeah. Intake and blow, uh, blow off valve, yeah. obviously. Blow off valve is definitely a big. The nice thing about this blow off, too, is that it's actually still recirced. These Gretti type S's, you can still recirc. Oh, um, yeah. Unlike okay. like yep. an HKS kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. That's my style. Yeah. I would much rather have something like that. I mean, fairly impressive for a stock turbo, not gonna lie. Yeah, it's not bad, hey. I mean, spool is so good. You know, I've driven big power Evos and they're fun, but to me an Evo is not to be enjoyed as a straight no, line. No, it, it's vehicle. a cornering car all day long. Like, I'd honestly build an STI if I wanted something that's a nice highway cruiser. Yeah, to me the Evo 5, when I drove it for the first time, I was like, just, it felt glued to the road. Oh, like, yeah. relentless grip, where this is like, this is a little bit more rowdy in a sense. Yeah, oh yeah. Know? Especially if, you know, you were to bump up 350, 400 horsepower, it, it's a car that it feels like it's gonna jump out of its skin. Yeah, exactly. Is, I mean, to me, that's like, that's what an Evo is, especially compared to an STI. Well, and the power level you're at right now, like third gear going up a hill on a hot day, yeah. and there's, there's plenty of torque, it feels, Maybe not quite. I mean, it feels pretty much on par with a new Type R. Yeah. To be honest, like it's it's that kind of power. So even just with these small, like not small mods, it's a, it's a built engine. Yeah. But like stock turbo, it's not making crazy power. You've brought it up to the modern. It's spec. pretty much just bolt-ons, right? And yeah. Like even then, yeah. Like like you said, it's just modern spec. And you have the potential, of course, with the build motor to go just balls. Anyway, to the yeah. Wall. This motor is probably good for 
with the head studs and everything that are in it. Um, I'd probably have to build the valve train still, but mm -hmm. it'd I'd say this motor's probably good for about 600. <laughs> yeah. That would just make this thing undrivable. I'd really like to be, I don't even care what power this car is at, I just want it driving like this. Like, I just want it driving good. Totally. And like, yes. still pulls out of the corners, like. To me, an Evo is like, you can just snap it back and it'll oh, take yeah. crazy direction change. Well, and that's exactly what this car is built for, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly why I have it set up the way it is. It's like, certain sections on this road, this car is terrible. But, yeah. other sections, it's great. Yeah, it throws you back. I was not expecting the turbo to sound this loud with yeah. the mods you have right now. I don't know this road too well, so I'm not probably going to be cooking it as hard as you would be, but... Dang, the punch, even above 100k. Yeah, it's pretty rowdy, eh? It feels like at least a 300 pound feed. Now, do you have plans to go big turbo? Like, 400 horse? To me, it, like, it doesn't need it, but it could be fun. There's a little bit of rubbing. No, that's just the AYC pump. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, that's, yeah, <laughs> strange rubbing sound, but... Yeah, it has a nice lean to it. It's not, it doesn't feel like the rear end it's just gonna like skip out no it honestly like i rarely can eat, like if it's daytime or if it's nice and warm out like this i can't even get the rear end to kick out no yeah. and people will say oh you're not driving it hard enough <laughs> well the car is on two wheels so how am i supposed to drive it harder than no. that like it's it's showing its age a little bit yeah you know it's not gonna be a brand new like no uh, it's not gonna dampen every bump that's kind of the way that I also have the coils set up right now, so mm. you can feel everything. So like, when you do eventually lift off, I doubt you'll be able to, but yeah, if you ever yeah. do like actually get a wheel to lift off the ground, you feel it instantly. Yeah. So it's very stiff right now, but it's I have it set up like that, so I can feel every single thing that the car's doing. No, I like that. And I mean, especially around here, you guys have some of the best roads, so. And you have a variation. You got tons of smooth roads, but then you also have stuff like this yeah. that has like, dips like that if yeah maybe we should make a gap <laughs> if you were going quickly then you could really feel the uh, all the you know intricacies of the road through the suspension yeah so exactly and actually get to know your car a little bit well especially yeah like the roads around here are perfect so it's kind of a nice thing yeah like mark IV supra yeah let's drive across canada evo 4 eh, let's drive meh. to let's drive to <laughs> an hour away <laughs> yeah yeah that's pretty much as good as you're getting it's like a it's a time attack car Okay, so here's a question for you. Yeah. What do you think of a factory stock clean, low-ish mileage, like let's say under 150,000 kilometers, yeah. which isn't too high for a 96, what would you pay for for a car like that? Evo 4 or 5? Like what are those worth to you? You're asking the wrong person, honestly, because what I would pay is very different than what, like, because I, I would pay what the car is actually worth. And I would probably pay for one of these, like a clean one under yeah. 150,000 K. I'd probably pay, I don't know, like 18, 19, maybe 20 stretching it for a oh, nice one. Yeah, I was gonna but, say 20. Yeah. And we're talking Canadian like, dollars. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And But I don't know, like it's it's ridiculous because you know, US buyers will pay a lot of money and stuff like that for these things. So mm -hmm. it's, like prices just skyrocket, right? So yeah. like, yeah. it's ridiculous to say that this car could be pushing 30 grand plus. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but like, it is. and I, I would never, pay that much for one i think that's a terrible price to pay yeah i, I don't think like, i think that it's a great car and i love the car like and i was you know i bought this car at when they were cheap right like i bought them when they were still under ten thousand dollars yeah so like even 20 grand for me saying that is painful yeah all right you guys that's saul's evo that was a good rip man thank you oh, yeah, of course Anytime. appreciate it uh yeah if you want to check out the car oh we got a mustang gt <laughs> don't want to mess with him <laughs> Uh, if you want to check out the car on Instagram, yeah, I'll put Saul's stuff in there. Uh, yeah, Evo 4, what is it worth to you guys? I want to know, because uh, right now, cars and bids, I looked, they're going for around 15,000 USD, roughly. And of course, the outliers are going for a lot more than that, 35, 40K USD. 
And then, of course, when you get to like Evo 6, Tommy Mackin and Oh, it's just, for, yeah, insane. be prepared. <laughs> yeah, exactly, be prepared. And that's before you even dive into uh, potential uh, restoration stuff. But anyways, hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. A couple more videos for you guys here in Kelowna, and then we'll be back to the mainland. And a couple more trips that I haven't uh, told you guys about later this year. See you next time. Thank you.